In this tutorial, I'll show you how to write an equation of a rotated conic section in standard form. The question reads, rewrite the equation shown on your screen in a rotated x prime y prime system without an x prime y prime term. Express the equation in the standard form of a conic section and then graph the conic section in the rotated system. The steps to doing this are shown to the right of your screen. And in step number one, we're told to use the given equation that's an expanded form to find cotangent to theta using the formula also shown. So given our equation 2x squared plus the square root of 3xy plus y squared minus 2, we can outline what our a, c, and b coefficients are. Starting with x squared, it has a leading coefficient of 2 and that represents a. So I'll write down a is equal to 2 c is the leading coefficient of y squared, in our case that's 1. And b represents the leading coefficient of xy. And over here we have the square root of 3. So let's go ahead and substitute those into the formula. We have cotangent, which is a reciprocal trigonometric function. That's 1 over tangent, and that's equal to 2 minus 1 over the square root of 3. As I mentioned, cotangent is a reciprocal trigonometric function. So I'll write down 1 over tangent 2 theta is equal to 1 over the square root of 3. And this is the same thing as if we multiply both sides by tangent 2 theta, we have the square root of 3 is equal to tangent 2 theta. Now as you know, tangent is a trigonometric function. It's a comparison a ratio that compares the opposite over the adjacent. So this is opposite over one, the adjacent. So to find out what theta is, I'll take inverse tangent of both sides, inverse tangent of square root of three is equal to two theta, and then dividing both sides by two should give us our angle in degrees. So let's go ahead and use our calculator. We have inverse tangent of the square root of 3 divided by 2 and our angle theta is equal to 30 degrees. Now that we found our angle we've actually accomplished both steps 1 and step 2. In step 3 we're told to substitute theta in the rotation formulas and we have two rotation formulas that are right here. So let's go ahead and find out what we should replace x and y with and it will be these two expressions. So we have x is equal to x prime cosine at 30 degrees minus y prime sine at 30 degrees. y is equal to x prime sine at 30 plus y prime cosine at 30. You can use special triangles to evaluate what cosine and sine at 30 are, but I'll just use my calculator we have cosine at 30, that's equal to the square root of 3 over 2. So wherever you see cosine 30, you'll replace it with the square root of 3 over 2. Let's go ahead and do that. x is equal to x prime, the square root of 3 over 2, minus y prime, and let's find out what sine 30 is. That's equal to half. So y prime over 2 and y is equal to x prime over 2 plus y prime square root of 3 over 2. That's it for step number 3. Let's move on to step number 4. Step number 4 says substitute the expressions for x and y from the rotation formulas in the given equation and simplify. So technically we're going to take these two expressions and substitute them back into our original equation. So let's go ahead and do that. And before I do, I just want to simplify these two expressions, something that I should have done in the previous step. Notice that these two terms both have a denominator of 2, which means that I can write them out as 2 as a common denominator, x prime square root of 3 minus y prime, that's x, and y will be x prime plus y prime square root of 3 all over 2. And remember, our equation was what's shown on your screen. 
and we will substitute this expression into here, here, and this expression into here and here. If you do that correctly, you should end up with the following. That's what it should look like. And before we continue, I want you to take a close look at what we've done. And if you can, simplify as much as possible. You can start from this term. Here we have 2 over here and a 2 over here. But before we cancel out this 2 and this 2, we have to give this exponent of 2 to the bottom. That makes it 2 to the power of 2, and that's 4. So this stays as 2, and this becomes a 1, or it goes away. And don't forget that only the numerator now has this exponent of 2. Similarly, the same thing applies here. You have this 2 being raised to the power of 2. That becomes a 4. And this 2 only applies to the numerator following that. The majority of these terms now have a denominator. And we can get rid of the denominator by finding the lowest common denominator. And in that case, it's 4. So if I multiply each of these terms, or the whole equation, by 4, here's what I end up with. 4 divided by 2 is 2, so this goes away, and we end up with a 2 at the top. In this term, we multiply the two 2's together, and divide that by 4, those go away. 4 goes away with this one, and we're left with negative 2 times 4, that's negative 8. Multiplying the 4 to the 0 doesn't change anything. So your new expression should look like this. Just before we continue, here's an update on the equation. Now, there's still more to be done here. In fact, you can expand this expression, this expression, and this expression, and let's see what happens if you do that. Now, notice that I've expanded the whole equation. Now, this is complicated, and there's a lot of terms here, but if you do this correctly, and if you've been following along, your final equation should look like this. Here we have 10x prime squared plus 2y prime squared minus 8 is equal to 0. And that satisfies step number 4. In step number 5, we have to write the equation involving x prime and y prime in standard form. To do that, we will take this 8 over to the other side. We have 10x prime squared plus 2y prime squared is equal to positive 8. So to put this equation into standard form, we want to make sure that this 8 is equal to 1. I'll divide everything by 8. That makes this 1. Here we have over 4. And here we have 10 over 8, which is equal to 5 over 4. So now we have 5x prime squared over 4 plus y prime squared over 4 is equal to 1. Now to make sure that this is in standard form, we need to have no leading coefficient in front of the x prime squared term. And to rewrite this term, I can write it as 4 over 5 instead. And the reason for that is because, let's say I have x prime divided by 4 over 5. I'll flip this fraction. I end up with x prime squared times 5 over 4. It's the same thing. Now I'm ready to graph. As you can see in our equation, we have both terms that are positive. This should tell you that we're dealing with an ellipse as opposed to a hyperbola, because in a hyperbola, the two terms are being subtracted, whereas in an ellipse, they're being added. And what is shown on your screen now, if this number, the one below the y term, is greater than that below the x term, then you're going to have an ellipse where the major vertex is vertical. So if I were to sketch this, you would have an ellipse like this, where it's wider vertically than it is horizontally. And since this one is being rotated 30 degrees, this ellipse, which is centered at the origin, will move in this direction, this way, where you would make 30 degrees along the vertical. That makes 30 degrees. and this point would now be over here, and it would look something like this. Now, of course, this is just a sketch. So if you wanted to be more accurate, you could actually find out what this point is and these points using the techniques that have been taught in previous videos. An actual graph of this equation is shown on your screen. And there you have it. That is how to write an equation of a rotated conic section 
in standard form.